Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here, and welcome to my review of Terminator Salvation, which is the fourth film in the currently five film Terminator film series. It will be six next year. So, anyway, Terminator Salvation. Well, when I first, first saw this, I didn't really enjoy it that much, but recent rewatch, it was pretty good. I thought it was very good. I have not seen the director's cut yet. I will watch that before I do the big film ranking, uh, five film ranking, along with the Terminator 2 extended special edition. So, I've got those two rewatch uh, before we do the big uh, ranking. So, we're just looking at the theatrical cut this time round. And um, it's alright, it's pretty good. I think I prefer it to Terminator 3 now. Uh, Terminator 3 was a bit of a uh, disappointing watch. So, yeah, I do not, however, think it is as good as the first two. So, got that out of the way. Um, yeah. With this one, we are now... The film is now in 2018. That's when it's set, and coincidentally, this is 2018. So... The film is taking place about now-ish, um, in the fi this fictional universe. And it sees John Connor as one of the rebellion leaders. And he is leading the fight against the machines. So, that's it's basically John Connor and, his, and the rebellions fighting against the machines. With a new character, Marcus Wright, uh, being a new type of Terminator, uh, well, new type of machine with where they put um, machine parts inside a human body. Hmm, interesting. However, he thinks it's human and he's on a mission to protect Kyle Reese, who uh, needs saving in this film because he is a uh, part, a want to be, want to be part of the rebellion, and then he gets captured. So. John and Marcus have to find a way to rescue uh, Kyle from uh, Cyber from Skynet and take on the headquarters. But it's not straightforward as that because once Marcus meets John, that's when he discovers he's a machine or part machine. And then, a short while later, we have a pretty pointless escape bit of. Uh, Ca uh, Sergeant Williams' his character, it's the helicopter pilot uh, woman, um, she helps him escape because she likes him, basically, and trusts him. So, re yeah, it's a bit of a pointless bit and she gets captured again, but it's alright, John lets her go after he realises Marcus is... Uh, He's going to rescue Kyle, he's true to his word. So, yeah, all pretty pointless. John finds out not too long afterwards anyway that Marcus was telling the truth all along. So, we pretty much delayed the movie by a couple of minutes. We could have rewritten that scene to make it more of a uh, John eventually coming round to the idea, and then he agrees to come up with a plan after a little bit of discussion with everybody else. Could have saved a lot of time by just doing that. <sighs> it also saves money on effects and props and all, all that. Also, the story isn't amazing. I think it's good, but I don't think it's quite amazing. I mean, it's alright for a survival film in the uh, 20, uh, 21st century in 2018 with the, the war and the rebellion. I think it's also where we see uh, John is not quite in charge just yet, but I think this is where he becomes in charge uh, once command is destroyed, basically. Whoops. And also, yeah. <laughs> I also have to mention that whilst uh, last time, I didn't think there was much of Kate's character in the film. However, after watching it again, I think she does get a bit of stuff to do. Quite a bit of stuff here, just not as much as Terminator 3. 
and yeah, there could have been some more stuff she could have done. She could have been like the second in command or any or something, but no, not really. They decided to make her pregnant, which I suppose is okay. It's just that she gets less stuff to do uh, for the most part. I mean, she helps out quite a bit, but for the most part, she's not really as much of a presence as in the third film. In the third film, it was very much trying to make sure she stayed alive as much as John. But in this film, she helps out in a couple of bits and is just there in others. So that's disappointing. Maybe if there was more, if there were sequels to this one as they planned, she might have got a bit more to do. Uh, but sadly not. Thankfully, this does work as a standalone film, like the third film, as well as the start of what would have been. Uh, follow-ups. I mean, the third one maybe might not have been, but this one certainly was, as was Genesis. And that one, again, standalone, I suppose it's okay. But I think out of all of them, Genesis is the one that would definitely tie into follow-ups um, at as it is, as opposed to the link in the next one or the one after, so... Or at least with that post credit scene, anyway. Yeah, we'll get to Genesis next time. So... Yeah, Salvation, on the other hand, um, the story is actually pretty simple. The cast is actually pretty good. I think this is. I think Christian Bale is probably the better of the adult John Connors that we have. Um, excluding the one from Terminator 2 because he didn't get much to do. And I think the older one in Terminator 3 is the same as the younger one. Just with some makeup and costume change to make him look a little bit older and then uh, Genesis whilst I prefer the actor in Genesis to the one in Rise of the Machines the way that they treat the character is absolutely shit so out of the adult John Connors I think Christian Bale is the best actor to play the role and has the best character of the character um, note this is adult John Connor um, the best one, of course, is Edward Furlog from Terminator 2. Obviously, <laughs> the best character and the best performance overall. But out of the adult ones, I think Christian Bale would come a close second best overall. Um, definitely the best of the adult ones. There wasn't a John Connor in the first film, so we can't count any from that one. I also like Anton Yelchin as... Um, Kyle Reese. He's not quite as the same as the one from the first film, but he's still he's still good. He's better than the one from the fifth film. And uh, Sam Worthington is also very good as Marcus. He does a really good job in his new character. And I think Bryce Dennis Howard does a slightly better job as Kate, but again, not as much to do. And uh, Helena Bonham Carter's great in this as well, in her small but memorable role as a doctor at the start, and then later it turns out that Sky Skynet uses her face and voice to talk to Marcus. And great to see a well it's not really an Arnold Schwarzenegger cameo, but they put they CG his face onto a younger model, so a Arnie Terminator gets to make an appearance in this film. Yes! And the moment when he comes out, they play that music, the theme from Terminator 2, and it is gorgeous. This film has a few more versions of the Terminator 2 theme, or just the Terminator theme, full stop, then the third film, so that's an improvement, definitely. And Danny Elfman does a great score, in fact, I did like Marco Beltrim score from the third film, but I didn't think it quite fit Terminator. Um, whilst this one, I think Danny Elfman's score does fit Terminator, certainly this version. Uh, this film's version, anyway. And... Yeah. Um, and also, the titles are very much like the first film, with the letters uh, of the film kind of rolling around the uh, screen, and you have the people's, uh, the actors' names at points, and then at the end it, be it becomes Terminator Salvation. That being said, Terminator Salvation in the same font and st uh, style and colouring and 
size as the actor's names makes an appearance uh, just after Sam Worthington's name and then at the end you get the uh, title in the bigger uh, different colours and size font as it's coming down into the same size so I don't know why they needed to say it twice in the opening titles in the end titles they could have put it down definitely I'm not sure the rest of the titles are during uh, Marcus's execution scene and just before it, jump, it, it jumps to 2018 and then we've got all the information stuff in kind of text form for some reason as opposed to a voiceover and certainly with, with DVD and Blu-ray you can pause to read it if you want to read it out loud or if you want to read it in your head uh, but if at the cinema you wouldn't be able to pause it so people who are trying to read it on screen would have to read it quickly as soon as they you know, notice it's uh, it's happening pretty quickly. There's not many, there's not much time between between gaps. And I think that's one thing voiceovers from the previous three films uh, did better than this film. They were able to tell it, uh, tell all the information, uh, not too fast, but not too slowly either. They could tell it at a time, at a pace and get everything out so everyone knows what's happening, everyone knows the information. Uh, as, for, as with this, there isn't much time to read everything before it gets to the next bit and moves up. So some people might miss bits. Certainly I had to pause and go back at some point. And sadly, because the studio uh, chickened out, the film is not rated R in America, it is PG-13, and in the UK it's not a 15, it's 12. Um, then again, so was the third film, but... Yeah, but that one was still an R in America. So... Yeah, the studio chicken out, and they did the same for Genesis, and it was even worse. And um, so... Yeah... I mean, the director's cut, I think, might be an R-rated version in America. Uh, it still passes as a 12 over here, so a bit like Rise of the Machines, basically. Um, I'm not sure, maybe there was some more bad language or uh, more violent bits. Um, that scene where uh, Williams takes off her clothes and we can see her naked. That might be in the director's cut, I'm going to have to check, check that. It's definitely in the American version, I think. Though... I did hear that that was going to be part of the plan. They were going to show the scene in the film, but when the studio chickened out, basically, it doesn't get to appear on screen much. So, if that is in the director's cut, uh, we will. I will know. Um, it's not in the theatrical cut. That's disappointing. I thought it was just cut out of the TV version when I first saw it, but no, it's cut out the theatrical cut. What you don't think twelve-year-olds can? stand seeing a naked woman, but 13 year olds are okay with it. Then actually, the director's cut may also be a 12. So, yes they could, so why? <sighs> yeah, the problem with rating some films that are supposed to be R-rated, PG-13, this is in America by the way, it sometimes detracts from the quality of the film. I mean, fair enough, say what you say, like about good, A Good Day to Die Hard. But I think there was slightly more R-rated content in that, certainly more than the previous installments of that film uh, series. It's, uh, Terminator Salvation and Genesis show that. Hope they're going back to R-rating with the next film. Hopefully it'll be a 15 over here. Uh, same with Die Hard 6. And they did the same with... Uh, Aliens vs Predator, for some reason they tried to make it a PG-13 and it just felt bad. So that, no wonder they went all, nearly all out for the next Alien vs Predator film and sticking with it for the other films. Thankfully, Predator, The Predator will be an R in America. I'm not sure what it's going to be in the UK. Uh, this at time recording when this goes out it might already be out in the UK uh, or just about to come out it's probably going to be a 15 um, so yeah um, in conclusion Terminator Salvation is entertaining it's got some good moments but it's not brilliant it's not amazing there could have been some stuff that could have been rewritten or 
reshot or something, and someone should have gone to the studio and say, no, we're, we're going to make the movie we want to make. Don't hold us down uh, by the rating or anything. So, anyway. So that's with Salvation. I think it's got some good acting in it as well. And it definitely looks really good. I don't get the hate for it, but it's not uh, an amazing film. It's alright. So, Terminator Salvation, I'm going to score it, as soon as I pick it up, a 7 out of 10. Like I said, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's good to look at, and it's it's not fuss it's not a frustrating watch like some other ones. <clears throat> Cop off Genesis, and I also think it's much better made than Rise of the Machines, and certainly looks and, and certainly executed better than that. So that was Terminator Salvation. Next time we will be reviewing Terminator Genesis, which will be on the Nicholas Payne main channel, the main channel, because this is a 2015 film I saw at the cinema, so when I've rewatched it and reviewed it, it will be going on that channel, as will a film called Minions and In Inside Out. They're going to be ones I'm hoping to see pretty well, pretty soon. And um, I don't think the 2015 ones are going to come out in order, but then again, the 2016 ones have started with Conjuring 2, and I filled in the ones I saw beforehand in the gaps, whilst also newer films I saw uh, that year, so that followed after Secret Life of Pets, it was filling in the gaps of the six films I saw before Conjuring 2, whilst watching some new ones at the same time, so I don't mind the 2015 films being slightly out of order, uh, and in this case, if I see Minions before and Inside Out, that technically is in order. It's just that we're missing Ted to an out and between them and a couple of others uh, before and after. But we'll get through all of them. Um, so, yeah. Might be able to rewatch Ted 2 as well. And maybe if the first one gets shown again, I can review that one not too long after that. Yeah. And also, uh, Predator and Predator 2 are being re-shown next week. Um, so I am going to re-watch them. I think I'm going to be able to watch the first one before the second one, depending on the... Not the second one, the new one, depending on my schedule. Um, but I'll definitely check out both of them and, uh, again, and I'll review them. Still haven't seen the third one, and I don't know if that's going to be shown. Damn it. That might still have to wait until I get that box set. Uh, so, but definitely Predator and Predator 2 reviews will be coming either by the end of September or start of October and the uh, same for the 2015 review uh, Inside Out and Minions will be late September or early October and this will be probably later in this, later this week or next week depending on when this goes out so I've got to watch it first so and also um, and that'll be on the main channel the others uh, will be on this channel, and also The Predator, which I hopefully see at time recording next week, which will have a review on, again, the, on the main channel, because new 2018 release film at the cinema. So, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you for watching this review of Terminator Salvation. Next review on this channel will probably be, uh, well, film review certainly will be uh, Predator, Next Terminator review, which will be on the Nick Pay uh, Nicholas Payne channel, will be Terminator Genesis. And uh, there should be some Aimless Wanderings vlogs coming up. And I think by now we've got all the Doctor Who Season 1 reviews out. Uh, season 2 will be coming after the Aimless Wanderings vlogs, or uh, maybe in some gaps. Uh, we'll see. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.
forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nick Payne Extra YouTube channel. Hello ladies and oh sorry. It will be sex next year. So yeah. Did I say that? Um also however this time around I think she does get a I think uh but I think Genesis out of ball on him. So that was Terminator Genesis. And next time we will be reviewing. Sorry, that's wrong.